dear students in the previous class we have defined what is a stationary stochastic process and what is a non stationary stochastic process and in economics many time series are non stationary so the question is what will happen to oiless estimators if uh, we use non stationary random variables or non non stationary time series before explaining the consequences of using non stationary time series in econometric analysis we have to first consider the nature of non stationary stochastic processes and compare it with stationary stochastic processes so in the present class i will first explain what is a stationary stochastic process that is what is a stationary time series with a few examples then in the subsequent classes we will compare the characteristics of a stationary stochastic process with the, that of a non stationary stochastic process consequences of using non stationary stochastic processes or non stationary time series will be discussed later now suppose that yt is an economic variable that we have observed over time such as gnp consumption investment prices etc we assume that yt is random because its value cannot be predicted in advance we do not know what will be the value of the np in the next year as an example now the process generating yt is said to be a stochastic random process stochastic or a random process and a sample observed is a realization from this stochastic process now we consider yt as a single series we will not consider any other series now so it is a univariate analysis this an this analysis enables us to identify the characteristics of the process and in the univariate process we relate yt to its own past values not to the values of any other variable now we consider the simplest case that is first order autoregressive model written as ar1 first order autoregressive model ar1 now in this ar1 model yt is related to its own past value yt minus 1 and a stochastic error type and my aim here is to show the difference between stationary and non stationary time series first i consider the stationary time series stationary stochastic process and we derive some of its properties then we compare this with the non stationary stochastic process now 
an AR1 model can be written as yt is equal to phi1 we write it as phi1 yt minus 1 plus epsilon t an AR1 model yt is related to its past value yt minus 1 plus epsilon t now it is assumed that phi absolute value of phi1 is less than absolute value of phi1 is less than 1 now epsilon t is such that expected value of epsilon t is 0 variance of epsilon t is a constant sigma square epsilon and covariance epsilon t epsilon t plus s is equal to 0 so epsilon t is white noise error type in the context of time series error terms are known as shocks or innovations epsilon t is known as shocks also known as innovations also known as innovations shocks or innovations epsilon t the stochastic error type now i have imposed a condition here absolute value of i1 is less than 1 this condition is necessary to ensure that yt is stationary yt is stationary that will be more clear when we proceed so absolute value of i1 is less than 1 now ar1 shows that yt is related to its past value yt minus 1 and epsilon t a white noise character we can extend this to arp ar2 ar3 ar4 etc arp where yt the realization is related to yt minus 1 yt minus 2 yt minus 3 etc we stick on to the simple model now in order to analyze the properties of this series the mechanism generating yt we study its properties to study the properties properties means expected yt variance covariance etc given that this is the mechanism generating the time series we resort to what is known as recursive substitution recursive substitution this is a procedure we have considered earlier when discussing the first order auto regressive scheme in the context of auto correlation where ut was specified as equal to rho ut minus 1 plus epsilon t now assuming that the process has started at a time 0 we write y1 as equal to phi1 y0 plus epsilon 1 y2 is equal to phi1 y1 plus epsilon 2 is equal to phi1 phi1 y0 plus epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 is equal to phi1 square y0 plus phi1 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 y3 is equal to phi1 y2 plus epsilon 3 is equal to phi1 y2 is phi1 square y0 plus phi1 epsilon 1 plus epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 so y3 is equal to phi1 cube y0 plus phi1 square epsilon 1 plus phi1 epsilon 2 plus epsilon 3 if uh, you continue this process like this if you continue with this process like this you can write uh, yt as equal to y3 epsilon 3 so yt as equal to 
epsilon t plus phi 1 epsilon t minus 1 plus phi 1 square epsilon t minus 2 epsilon t minus 2 plus etc plus phi 1 raised to t minus 1 epsilon 1 t minus 1 y3 phi 1 square so phi 1 raised to t minus 1 epsilon t plus phi 1 raised to t y0 recursive substitution is extensively used in econometrics when we proceed so you practice with this procedure now this is the process and uh, as you can see here, as absolute value of phi 1 is less than 1, as t approaches to infinity, as t approaches to infinity, this phi 1 raised to t minus 1 epsilon 1, phi 1 raised to t y 0 approaches to 0. As t approaches to infinity, these two terms phi 1 raised to t minus 1 and phi 1 raised to t approaches to 0. So we write yt as equal to epsilon t plus phi 1 epsilon t minus 1 plus phi 1 square epsilon t minus 2 plus etc. Now as you can see yt is a weighted sum of past shocks epsilon t phi 1 epsilon t minus 1, phi 1 square epsilon t minus 2, etc. And as you can see, the effect of past shock decreases as you move away in the past. Phi 1 of epsilon t minus 1, phi 1 square of epsilon t minus 2, phi 1 cube of epsilon t minus 3 and like. That means remote past shock has less influence on the realization yt if the process is stationary. Now let us see what is the mean of the process. Expected yt is equal to 0 because if you take a expected epsilon t, phi 1 ex expected epsilon t minus 1, epsilon t minus 2 etc is equal to 0. So if yt is equal to phi 1 yt minus 1 plus epsilon t, with the absolute value of phi 1 less than 0, then it follows that the process has 0 mean. The process has 0 means. Now, let us see what is variance of the process y t is equal to variance of epsilon t plus phi 1 epsilon t minus 1 plus phi 1 square epsilon t minus 2 plus etc. So this is equal to sigma square epsilon plus phi 1 square sigma square epsilon plus phi 1 raised to 4 sigma square epsilon plus etc. Variance of sigma square epsilon plus phi 1 square sigma square epsilon plus phi 1 raised to 4 because variance of a x is as per the variance x. Now, also, as covariance epsilon t, epsilon t plus s is 0, all the covariance terms disappear. And the variance of epsilon t equal to t minus 1, t minus 2, etc. Using these two properties, this can be written like this. This is equal to sigma square epsilon into 1 plus phi 1 square plus phi 1 raised to 4 plus etc. That is can be written as sigma square epsilon. Actually this is an infinite geometric progression. Infinite geometric progression with the phi 1 square the common ratio sigma square epsilon the first term. So it becomes 1 minus phi 1 square. So variance of it is sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. 
sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. That means mean is 0, variance is a constant. Mean is 0, variance is a constant. Now, so expected yt is equal to 0. Variance of yt is sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. Now, let us see what is the covariance between yt, yt minus 1, etc. Then since this is yt, we can write yt minus 1 as epsilon t minus 1 plus phi 1 epsilon t minus 2 plus phi 1 square epsilon t minus 3 plus etc. Now, covariance yt y t minus 1 is equal to, since expected y t is equal to 0, covariance y t y t minus 1 is equal to expected value of epsilon t plus phi 1 epsilon t minus 1 plus phi 1 square epsilon t minus 2 plus into epsilon t minus 1 plus phi 1 epsilon t minus 2 plus phi 1 square epsilon t minus 3 plus etc. Actually covariance is yt minus expected yt minus yt minus 1 minus expected yt, expected yt is 0. So this is covariance. Now if you take the, if you multiply this with this and take the covariances, you will see that epsilon t, epsilon t minus 1, expectation 0, all the other times. Then phi 1, epsilon t minus 1, epsilon t minus 1. So phi 1, sigma square epsilon, the first term, phi 1 into sigma square epsilon plus then epsilon t minus 2, etc. Then here phi 1 square epsilon t minus 2, phi 1 epsilon t minus. So phi 1 cube sigma square epsilon. Then the next one will be phi 1 raised to phi sigma square epsilon plus like this. If you take a, if you multiply this with this and take expectations, that will give you. I take a phi 1 into sigma square epsilon out plus 1 plus phi 1 square plus phi 1 raised to 4 plus etc. Phi 1 into sigma square epsilon is taken out then 1 plus phi 1 square plus phi 1 raised to 4 plus etc. That will give us phi 1 into sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. That is the covariance between yt, yt minus 1. Phi 1 into covariance yt, yt minus 1 is equal to phi 1 into sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. Phi 1 into sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. Or phi 1 into variance of yt because sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. If you generalize this, covariance yt, yt minus 2 becomes phi 1 square into sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. And in general, covariance yt, yt minus k is equal to phi 1 raised to k sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. Covariance yt, yt minus k is phi 1 raised to k sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. So this is, these are the features of AR1 scheme with the absolute value of phi 1 less than 1. Now remember this, if phi 1 is equal to 1, variance of the series become infinite. 
or undefined we will say so it will become a non stationary process so this condition imposes the restriction that the process is stationary now what will be the shape of the graph of this process we know that this is a process with a zero mean expected y is zero variance is a constant so if time is here if the process yt is then the process will fluctuate around the zero mean the process will fluctuate around zero mean because the variance is a constant mean is zero so we have variance and covariance and derived and the dividing covariance with the variance will give us correlation so between yt yt minus 1 it is pi 1 between yt yt minus 2 it is pi 1 square between yt yt minus k it is pi 1 raised to k this pop this issue we will discuss when we discuss arima modeling in detail at a later time so we have a r1 process a problem with the, this process is it is a process with a zero mean but in economics you will rarely see such a process most processes will have a mean which is different from zero to take into account this possibility let us modify this equation as yt is equal to mu plus i1 yt minus 1 plus epsilon t absolute value of i1 is less than 1 again again less than 1 epsilon t as usual satisfy all the classical assumption now mu is not the mean of the process mu is the variable which will determine the mean of the process that is one let us see what we will obtain through recursive substitution now y1 is equal to mu plus phi1 y0 plus epsilon1 and y2 is equal to mu plus phi1 y1 plus epsilon2 is equal to mu plus phi1 y1 mu plus phi1 y0 plus epsilon1 plus epsilon2 is equal to mu plus phi1 mu plus phi1 square y0 plus phi1 epsilon1 plus epsilon2 y2 and if uh, you continue this you will get uh, yt as equal to mu plus phi1 mu plus phi1 square mu plus etc phi1 raised to t minus 1 mu plus phi1 raised to t y0 plus epsilon t plus phi1 epsilon t minus 1 plus phi1 square epsilon t minus 2 plus etc etc if uh, you continue this substitute of y3 then substitute y2 for y3 etc you will get it and uh, as you can see as as and uh, this can be written as yt is equal to this is this part is an infinite geometric progression with the mu the first term phi1 the common ratio so this part can be written as mu by 1 minus phi1 plus as t approaches to infinity this term and this term approaches to zero so plus epsilon t plus phi1 epsilon t minus 1 plus phi1 square epsilon t minus 2 plus etc that is the process that is the process now as you can see 
expected yt here is expectation of this mu by 1 minus pi 1 itself because it is a constant and this part is zero. And what is variance? Variance of yt is equal to you know yt minus suspected yt that is variance of this term that we have already derived sigma square epsilon by 1 minus pi 1 square. The same is true for covariances. The same is true for covariances also. That is covariance yt, yt minus k is phi 1 raised to k sigma square epsilon by 1 minus phi 1 square. So, if you compare this model with the first, you will observe that in the first case mean is 0, in the second case mean is not equal to 0, but variances are same. So, if you compare these two models, what you will get is, in the first case, against time, the pattern is like this. In the second case, mu by 1 minus phi 1 and the process fluctuate around a non-zero mean. The process fluctuate around a non-zero mean. Both are stationary processes because in both cases mean is a constant, variance is a constant and as you can see covariances are functions of lag length only, covariances are functions of lag length only because yt yt minus 1 all these are constants, yt yt minus 2 phi 1 square. 5, 5 1 raised to k. So, mean is constant, variance is constant, covariances are functions of lag length only. So, the two models we have considered here are examples of stationary stochastic process. The first with the zero mean, the second with the a mean which is different from zero. Now, in the next class, we will introduce non-stationary stochastic processes and compare this with the stationary stochastic process.